you know, I've been in this industry for a long, long time. And, you know, I got my start right there in Memphis, Tennessee. So what better person than to give a little intro to the only podcast in the UK that specifically talks about Memphis wrestling? That's right. We're talking about Memphis Continental Wrestling Cast. Folks, sit back, grab you a cup of hot tea. Hope you enjoy it. Hello again, everybody. Shane Russell and Luke Jennings right along ringside for another big day of championship wrestling. Hey, folks, this is Shane Russell. My dad was Lance Russell, the voice of Memphis wrestling. I'm coming to you from Memphis, Tennessee. And you're listening to the UK's number one and only Memphis wrestling podcast. This is Memphis Continental Wrestling Cast, and here's your host, Mr. Luke Jennings. Got a doggone good-looking show lined up. This is the future, baby, and Jimmy Hart's here. You're not in the same caliber as I am. Who's the greatest wrestler in the world, and why am I? You're acting like a hoodlum, now come on, quit it! Oh, what do you hear, what do you say? Hello again wrestling fans and welcome to the studios of the Old Bakery as we get ready to give you another exciting week here at the UK's number one and only Memphis Wrestling Podcast. We are, as always, the Memphis Concerns and Wrestling Cast. I am, as always, your host, Mr. Luke Jennings, hoping the podcast finds you fine and dandy here in the dwaning, the dwaning, the dwaning days of July. I think that's a word. Don't forget to subscribe to our home, the place to be, Wrestling Network, home of great shows such as Who's Next with This Ring, PTB Weekend Special, PTBN's Men of It, Wrestle Tracks, and so many other great shows, including everything coming to you from the Old Bakery Productions. A little bit more on that in a second. You can find out more about the network on Twitter at PTBN Wrestling. And don't forget our sister network, the North South Connection, again available on all good podcast suppliers, bringing you such great shows as Row One, Seat One, Wrestling Warzone, The Jenny Position, and I can't wait, Keithy. Hell to the Keith, Cronoso, Extreme Superior Dance, and so many other great shows. You can find out more about the network on Twitter at NoSoPod Network. Also, you can find out the Backbone Wrestling Network, a beautiful coming together of some of the best shows from the place to be in the North South Connection, including New Genome Mission, Ruthless Regression, Highway to the Impact Zone, and some new shows such as Cross Up, The Shit Take, and more. For more information about the network, you can find them on Twitter at Backbone24. That is back, all one word, Backbone and 24. You can also find them on all good podcast supplies, Backbone Wrestling Network, and you will find us on all good podcast supplies, Old Bakery Productions Network. That is right, ladies and gentlemen. We are not leaving the place to be. No way. We will never be doing that. But I've decided to start up Old Bakery Productions Network purely because it. Some people out there may listen, may only listen to my show and not be fans of the Place to Be Wrestling Network. Which, if you aren't, I can understand because you may just only be into Memphis or you may only be into old school wrestling. But because Place to Be has a whole range of modern and old school wrestling. But if you want to listen to everything that we do or have done, um, old old Bakery Productions Network. We are available on all good podcast suppliers. Um, as of recording this, I've put um, some episodes up. By the time you listen to this, hopefully I'll have a lot more up. But um, some of our one-off specials that we've done, like the uh, Battle Royal at the Albert Hall, ECW Living Dangerously 1998, Crimson Mask Chronicles, where we covered the 2023 CZW Tournament of Death matches there on there so if you go to old bakery productions network you'll find where we are we are again all good podcast supplies i'm not going to be on twitter i'm not putting myself through twitter again so unfortunately um there but if you subscribe to the old bakery productions network you will find everything everything will come to you at the same time as it has been doing on the place to be if you want to stay on the place to be that's fine if you want to come over to us that's fine you've got options but it's just if you don't want to listen to stuff on the place to be, which again I mean I can fully understand, but please do go and give a listen to the other shows because there is some great content out there. But Old Bakery Productions Network is there for Memphis Continental Wrestling Cast, Monday Night Project, Hamburg All Stars, Pure Wrestling Passion, um, any of these little one offs that I do. Again, everything will be on the place to be, but if you want to listen to it by itself, old school old bakery productions network. YouTube.com forward slash at Memphis Cast allows you to watch today's episode. As always, the link will be in the description. Uh, ProRacingTees.com forward slash Memphis Cast. If you so wish to uh, support the channel, it would be great. 
Uh, the links are in the description for the place to be in the North South YouTube as well. There's some fine stuff over there. And while you're out and about, please visit when it was cool.com for podcast articles and much more on retro pop culture, comics, wrestling, movies, TV, toys, history, and more. And also visit the history of WWE.com for all your historical needs. Richard and Graham have got you covered. If you want to learn more about the WWF or the WWF or the WWE, ECW, TNA, Ring of Honor, Smoky Mountain, and then NWA slash WCW, History of WWE has got you covered. You can look at TV histories, title histories, arena histories, year histories, you name it. Richard and Graham have got you covered. This week we are covering the 29th of September. Just a quick uh, spoiler alert. It's a 37 minute episode, so I'm guessing there's probably not going to be a lot of matches and it's probably going to be promo heavy but we will do our best as always to cover this um last week where's my fucking thing last week we covered the 22nd of december of uh, september where we saw handicap matches freight trains chop fests a classic studio brawl as well as all the usual awesomeness of the memphis territory before we head down to england let's give you a quick look see loo of what's been happening around the rest of the wrestling world this past week on the 29th of september 1984 in sarasota florida at the robots arena NWA World Champion Ric Flair defeats Billy Duck Haynes. Also on the 23rd, WWF have got a show in Minneapolis, Minnesota in the Met Center. 7,500 people are watching David Schultz defeat Salvatore Balomo. The Junkyard Dog defeating Bob Orton Jr. Roddy Piper defeated S.G. Jones. Hulk Hogan and Mad Dog for Sean defeat George Steele and Big John Studd. Pat Patterson and Michael Hayes, good lord, what a team. Defeated the Moondogs. Uh, WF Intercontinental Champion Tito Santana defeats Paul Orndorff via disqualification. Also in the 23rd Southwest Championship Wrestling. Have a show in the Hemisphere Arena, San Antonio, Texas. 5,000 in attendance to watch the Sheep Herders defeat the Road Warriors by disqualification. Southwest Champion Killer Tim Brooks defeated Manny Fernandez in a loser leaves town match. Pierre Le Bivis and Frenchy Martin defeat the Voodoo Malumba. That is Big Red Reese and Al Madrill by disqualification. The Hollywood Blondes, that being Eric Emery and Dan Greer, def- battled Brett Sawyer and Chicky Star to a no contest. The crowd was described as being nearly triple the size of a recent Southwest show. That is probably due to the attendance of the Road Warriors. Also on the 23rd, Eddie Gilbert defeated Stetch Mantel in Memphis for the international title by forfeit as the Nightmares attacked Dutch Mantel before the match. Thus, Mantel was unable to defend the title. We may see some footage of that. 24th of September, uh, South Eastern Championship Wrestling in Birmingham, Alabama. Scott Armstrong defeated Tommy Gilbert. Lord Humongous defeated Jason Walker. Jimmy Golden defeated Randy Barber. Porkchop Cash defeated Paul Brown. Bob Armstrong defeated Randy Rose by disqualification in an Indian strap match. How do you have a disqualification in an Indian strap match? The Rat Patrol, that being Johnny Ace and Steve Armstrong, defeated Mr. Wrestling 1 and 2. Mr. Olympia defeated Arn Anderson by disqualification in a false count anywhere match. Austin Idol defeats Book Zumhoff in a Texas death match. 24th of September, Greg Valentine defeated Tito Santana to win the Intercontinental title in London, Ontario, Canada. 25th of September in Tampa, Florida, Billy Jack Haynes defeats Ric Flair by disqualification. 26th of September, Championship Wrestling from Florida in Gainesville, Florida at the O'Connell Center. NWA World Champion Ric Flair defeats Billy Jack Haynes by disqualification. Also on the 26th, there is a show in Buffalo, New York for the WWF Memorial Auditorium. 5,000 people are witnessing Brutus Beefcake defeat Rick McGraw. Ken Patera defeats Chief J. Strongbow. Roddy Piper defeats Nick DiCarlo. Andre the Giant fought Big John Studd to a double countout. The Junkyard Dog defeated Greg Valentine. WF Women's Champion Wendy Richter defeated the Fabulous Moolah. The Wild Samoans defeat the Moondogs. Adrian... Sh- oh, no, that's... Oh, no, that's, that's, that's card, that, that card. Also on 26th, Adrian Street defeats Terry Taylor in Shreveport, Louisiana to win the Mid-South TV title. 28th of... September 1984, on a WWF show in St. Louis, Missouri, drawing 4,700, Tito Santana wore the Intercontinental title he had lost earlier and defended it against Paul Orndorff, winning by disqualification. This was to cover up the title change until it aired on television. Uh, also on the 28th, Mid-South Wrestling have a show in the Sam Houston Coliseum, 7,000, are watching Master P defeat Butch Reed in a ghetto street fight. 
North American champion Magnum TA battled Terry Taylor to a no contest. Hacksaw Jim Duggan defeated Steve Williams by disqualification. Disqualification. Jose Lothario defeated Buddy Landell. Mid-South Tag Team Champions the Midnight Express defeat the Fantastics. Brickhouse Brown fought Butchery to a ten, for 10 minutes to win $500. Aiden Street defeated Rick McCord. Rock and Roll Express defeated Chavo and Hecto Guerrero. And finally, on the 29th of September 1984, there is a show in the key, I guess it doesn't say, but I guess the key auditorium in Kansas City. Five and a half thousand might not be the uh, kilo to Fabulous Freebirds defeat the Moondogs by disqualification. Jack and Jerry Briscoe defeat the Spoiler and Bob Orton Jr. <laughs> Junkyard Talk defeated George Steele. Roddy Piper defeated Rocky Johnson. And Age Andre the Giant <laughs> wrestled Big John Studd to a draw. Surprise, surprise. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's head down to Lance and Dave as we cover. The 29th of September 1984 in episode 167 of the Memphis Continental Wrestling Cast. <laughs> Pull it to joy. Uh, well, Hart's in here with Rude and Bundy. Let's put off the break and we will... Uh, what we'll do is just go right on into the next match. tell you something my phone has been ringing off the wall every day every minute you know i just had a phone call last week from dallas texas and a man called me and said my name is dr d baby dr Dell. bad baby he said i'm bad i'm from dallas texas i said well what makes you so bad he said listen ma'am i want to wrestle i want to wrestle for the first family he said you take the baddest man down there in tennessee you got and i said that's jerry lawler he said you put me in the ring against him and i guarantee you i can beat him i said look what's your what's your credentials he said man when i was in spring training spring training baby i got fined 15 Every day I practice for beating up my own players. That's how bad the man is. He had more penalties than anybody for the Dallas Cowboys in one year. And he's going to be on this TV program today. Today? Today, baby. I feel so good. Stay tuned, baby. You're going to see the greatest day of my life. I feel good, Russell. Woo! Oh, Jimmy Hart's bubbling today. That's bad news for somebody. I don't know exactly who. Probably for us in the audience out there. We've got uh, Rude and Bunny in the ring. Get Craig Carson and Ken in here. Okay, Davey, let's have the official introduction. One fall, 15-minute time limit match. Uh, total weight, 440 pounds on the right of the screen. Ken Raper from Memphis, Tennessee, and from Brown Rock, Texas, his partner Craig Carson going against him at 692 pounds from Atlantic City, New Jersey, King Kong Bundy. And from Beverly Hills, California, Rick Rude. Their manager, Jimmy Hart, one fall, 15-minute time limit match. Jerry Calhoun, the referee. They are a very imposing-looking team. The word is awesome. So we have got a tag match. We've got Rick Rude and King Kong Bundy going up against Ken Raper and Craig Carson. Ken Raper starting for his team. Yellow trunks, white boots, King Kong Bundy, black singlet, black boots. He said about Dr. Death. I don't think it's David Schultz. I don't think it's Steve Williams. I'm not entirely sure what's going to be happening. Carl Nibber type to start off. Ken Raper and King Kong Bundy. Starting for their teams. Shove off by Bundy. Carl Nibber type again. We've got green ropes this week. Oh, pick a back up over there at the back of the head by uh, Bundy. Oh, Rams Ken Raper. Oh, no, and that's it. So we're clipped. Good Lord. They've got the reputation they do. We'll take time out. We've got more. I'd hazard a guess of Bundy and Rude winning. With Rufus R and Mark Reagan in just a moment. Rude was wearing a lovely leopard print tights. Very um, Rick Rude esque. <laughs> Dressed out in his favorite uniform. <laughs> Jerry. Says Brown. Hey, you notice they finally win a ball game this year, and here he comes all decked out. I've been waiting for years to wear this stuff, Lance, and. Uh, you know, I got it all, man. I got the jersey, the, the, the jackets, I got it all. When Eddie Marlott called me Thursday, and he said, you know, I just got a call from Jimmy Hart, and he said that he has found, and you know how Hart is on the phone, I guess, to Eddie Marlott. He calls and says, look, I found the greatest wrestler. It's the greatest day of my life and everything. He called Eddie Marlott and told him that he's found a, a former member of the Dallas Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys, yeah. And I said, Eddie, do me a big favor. And, and, he, and Hart said, the greatest thing about this guy is he wears the Dallas colors, he wears the Dallas hat, he wears the Dallas uniform, all this stuff. I said, great. I said, you book him against me on television. I said, let me wear all of this stuff that I got when I went up to Cleveland last year to interview those guys, and we'll just have 
it's going to be sort of like an NFL match here today. I told Calhoun, I said, don't disqualify anybody. If anybody uses a fist, throw the flag. Give them a 15-yard penalty. We're going to do it all. Today. So anyway, I'm looking forward to that. That's, going to That's coming up a, a little minutes. bit later, yeah. Before, but, but before we talk about that, I want to talk just a little bit about, uh, you know, uh, Dutch and Tommy were out here talking about what took place last week. Uh, not a very pleasant not a very pleasant situation, not only for Dutch, but for myself and Randy Savage as well. You know, we wrestled down at Cook Convention Center, and uh, there were two big matches. First of all, we had Rude and Bundy. Then there was a big uh, triple chance, two-ring battle wow. royal with $5,000 to the winner. Supposed to be only one winner. Well, in our first match, we're wrestling Rude and Bundy, and I take that wimp Bundy, and I drag him all the way back to that convention center, and I had him down in the floor with his tongue hanging out and his eyeballs popping out on stems. I'm choking the life out of him. Heart's clinging all over my back. We're right out in the middle of ringside there. And Savage has Bundy pinned up in the ring, right? All right. So the referee's out there well, he's with us. out there with you guys. Hart looks around, sees Bundy pinned. He goes up there, takes the powder or whatever it is, and throws it in Savage's eyes. Now, here comes the referee. One, two, three. We lose the match. That's right. Okay, we got a chance to come back in the triple chance battle royal. You're supposed to have one, run one winner in ring number one, one winner in ring two, and then right. they come back and wrestle each other. Right. Well, in ring one, it leaves down to Bundy and Rick Rude. Right. Now, instead of them wrestling each other, they stand there like They're two refused. goofs. Yeah, and they say, we're not going to wrestle each other. That's right. So what happens then, the last two left in ring two were me and Randy Savage, so that made it convenient. We wrestled each other in a tag team match and going to split the money, right? Right. Same situation. Mm. Bundy, Bundy and, and uh, Savage are outside the ring. Here I got Rude pinned, and here comes Hart with some more powder right in my face. We lose $5,000 plus two Big matches buck. in one night. Right. That's right. I'm sick of this, Lance. I've had it up to here. If Hart is going to constantly interfere, which he'll claim that he doesn't, but everybody out here knows that hey, you can't have a match without the Hart, the wimp Hart interfering. Am I right or not? You can't have a match. So I told Eddie, I said, Eddie, the best thing to do, I've told him this a hundred things to do, the best thing to do is don't let us have to worry about Hart on the outside of the ring. Put him in the ring, make it a six-man tag where we, here, got a, here. we got our fair shot at Hart, right? So we've got the match for Monday night. I'm looking forward to it. The only thing that I've got a big, big surprise in store for Jimmy Hart is I didn't want to announce today who our partner is going to be, but it's going to be me and the Macho Man, and we're going to have a mystery partner, somebody that wants to get at Hart real, real bad, and we're going to go against Savage and Bundy and Rude. And all I can tell you is it's not going to be the greatest night of Jimmy Hart's life Monday night. I can assure you that because we got a big surprise in store for the wimp Jimmy Hart. So, Lance, I want you to be there, and you people be there too, because as I said, it's going to be a surprise, a big one, and a happy one for me and Randy Savage, and Hart is not going to like it one bit, Lance. That's oh, be. yeah. Now, that's the kind of talk we love to hear. By golly, I'll tell you one thing for a fact. Anything that'll make Jimmy Hart unpleasant is going to be a situation where it's going to make a lot of other people happy for a living fact. That's coming up on uh, you Monday night. believe there's going to be a lot of getting it on now. Comes Rick Rude, King Kong Bundy, and and what happened to the greatest day of your life, uh, uh, Jimmy? You're out here. You got the neck brace on. Well, let me just say this, Russell, before I start. You know, last week out here, we did something that maybe Bundy and Rude shouldn't have done to Jerry Jarrett, the promotion out here. And I just want to make an open apology right now that it will never happen again. It will never happen again. And uh, on behalf of Bundy, Rude, and myself, that uh, we'd just like to apologize to Jared and the promotion, okay? I want to get that out of the way. What happened to my neck? A while ago, I was jumping. So enthusiastic a while ago, I went back to get a drink of water. When I leaned over to turn the water on, something in my neck popped here. Rude and Bundy carried me to the back, laid me down back there. They called my doctor, Dr. Evans, right here. Dr. Evans told me that he was going to send a note over here that positively do not crawl in the ring with anything or anybody. Don't even be close to the ring anymore today or for a week because my neck has been very seriously injured, and you know that, Russell. So what I asked him to send a note over here that I can give to Eddie Marlin because I'm not going to be able to wrestle Monday to night. To get you excused from wrestling Monday me, night? Well, not to get excused because I am injured, Russell. Don't you understand that? If your neck's hurt, it's hurt. So I'm just, like I said, I, I'm not going to be able to wrestle Monday night because of my neck. Doctor's orders, and that's the only reason because I am a man first, and you know I am a man. But I am not going to risk seriously injury for my neck. Now... We have a mystery partner that's going to be in our corner because if they can keep secrets from us, Russell, then we can keep secrets from them. So we've got a mystery partner. That's what I've got to say. You know, Lance, I don't understand exactly what's going on here. We've beaten Jerry Lawler up single-handedly. Shut up. He went out and he got a partner 
Now we beat him and Munchkin Man, Randy Salvage, up. And now they're going to get a mystery partner. Lance, who is it? Do you know who it is? Uh, I don't know anything about it. All I know is that the idea was that Hart's interfere and they want Lance, to get him in the room. Lance, how can a couple of great athletes like myself and King Kong Bundy train for a match when we don't know who we're fighting? Now, it doesn't matter really who it is because we're not afraid of anybody in professional wrestling. But we want to know who it is so we can train accordingly. Well, you don't know who You know, Lance, Jimmy can't play in the kind of strategy. The man's a genius at playing in strategy. He can defeat anybody in professional wrestling, but we've got to know what we're dealing with. This business about uh, mystery partners is a lot of nonsense, and the family's not going to stand for it. You know, I watch Jerry Lawler out here complaining, crying, and making excuses. You know, Lawler, excuses are nothing, baby. I'm sitting back here in my special dressing room that the Southern Heavyweight Champion has for himself and watching you cry, Lawler. All the AWA record book says is October 23rd, Cook Convention Center, Ravishing Rick Rude and King Kong Bundy defeated Jerry Lawler and Randy Savage. And then we came back in the Battle Royal and took all the money. There's no asterisk, Lawler, that says Jimmy Hart interfered. There's no footnotes that says we cheated. It's right there in black and white. We beat you, except your defeat, Lawler. You were beaten by better men. You've got that consolation. Unfortunately, you're correct about the record books. That's what they That's say. Right, and Jimmy, <laughs> it is a grave disappointment that you are using this to this get out of that I'm not right. using anything. Do you know who it is? Know if I knew who it is, I might even take this off the raffle. But my doctor told me I can't do it, and I'm going by strict. You listen to your doctor, don't you? Well, that's what yes, I'm sir. doing. I'm listening to my doctor. He said positively not wrestle. You know what? I could wrestle. You know, Jerry Lewis might be doing a telephone on me if I got piled drive one more time in the ring out there, so I can't take a Lance, chance on it. Jimmy Hart isn't a wrestler. Jimmy Hart is our manager, and he's injured at that. But we want to know, that's beside the point, we want to know who this mystery man is. Monday night, you'll find out who the mystery man why is. Do we, why should we wear this lawler, aren't you, Lance? You're just as scared as a matter. They can keep secrets from us, we can keep secrets from them. Well, now we got two mystery partners because Jim... His heart has got his neck brace back on again. All of a sudden, he was taken with a serious situation that prevents him from being there Monday night. The action will be there. A couple of mystery partners and a six-man tag. Time out. We'll be back in the ring in just a moment. Jerry, uh, I hope we don't have a repeat of what happened last week with uh, Rude and Bundy. I noticed they were out here making an apology to you, and well, they should have. Yeah, yeah, Lance. I, I just want to take a minute of the time. I, I received a lot of calls and letters at the office about the little incident that took place, and I feel like that it warranted because for every call you know that you receive, there are several hundred people that are wondering the same thing. A lot of the people ask, you know, why didn't you, uh, why didn't I hit them? And the first reason for that that I explain to the people over the telephone is that I am not insane. They are, they are <laughs> two very tough guys, and I was Good standing thought. here at the time by myself. The other reason is, is that a couple of years ago I had a, an eye problem that uh, uh, makes it so that I, I, you know, I was in danger of getting hit. It was a degenerative lattice, which means the retina is uh, on the verge of being detached. Mm -hmm. So um, I keep getting checkups, but I, I don't feel that I'm, uh, or I didn't feel last week that I was in a position to get in, in a fist fight. Uh, what I did do, though, that I think the fans ought to know, is that I had Bundy and Rude come in the office um, because I felt like we had to take some assertive action. Yes. Uh, we fined both of them $2,000 and told them that if any incidents like this happen again, uh, the, the Jarrett Promotion Company would suspend them. Uh, I've, I've done that, and, uh, and I have another little surprise for them that, that we won't talk about right now. You're not going to share that? With I did want to explain to the people what, uh, what the situation was. Okay. All right, Jerry. I'd like to know what that little, little surprise is in there. Okay, Jerry. Uh, Jared, thank you for coming out here, and we, I think, are ready to go, are we not, David? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Last week when, uh, when, Jer when Jerry was out here, we uh, had Bundy and Rude who came rolling out and were pushing Jerry around. Um, he had 
we had presented on behalf of the other promoters involved in a big extravaganza that was uh, uh, held in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, this trophy, Root and Bundy, come out, and then let's look what developed after they started pushing Jerry Jarrett around. So we've seen footage of this uh, big old brawl that we had last week with Rick Rude, King Kong Bundy, Jerry Lawler and Randy Savage. Bundy and Rude trying to uh, bully Jerry Jarrett following the uh, trophy that he got for the promoting that Pro Wrestling USA tape and Bundy and Rude were unhappy that they were not on the show. So they came up to bully Jerry Jarrett and then that led to... Jerry Lawler and King uh, Jerry Lawler and Randy Savage to come out. Jimmy Hart got involved. Lots of rolling around. Oh, little trash can over the head of Bundy. Jimmy Hart keeps coming over and trying to attack uh, Jerry Lawler. Lancer just stood around. Jerry Jack gets shoved to the ground. Rude picks up his trophy. Here comes Eddie Marlin. Oh, and the trophy to the head of uh, Jerry Lawler. Stood and send all these little black mats around on the floor because all they're doing is just making people uh, fly everywhere. But Randy Savage now decking Jimmy Hart. A very good ball, this is a very good ball indeed. It's what Memphis is uh, sort of infamous for, I think, is, is these classic brawls. Calhoun's trying to come and break it up. Lance trying to break it up. Jimmy Hart's pulling off. Uh, he's hanging off the edge of Jerry Lawler's uh, t-shirt, and in come the new generation. Yay! <laughs> Boy, that's something wow. you don't want to get through every day either. Oh. I'll tell you for a fact. Temperatures running a little bit high. Okay, we're ready to bring them in here right now. The Destroyer is going against the team of Rufus and Mark Reagan going against the Dirty White Boys in there, Rufus. Uh, I know that uh, because of the way they jump mark in there, it would be a particular uh, delight to you to be able to get to the dirty white boys. You guys are going to be looking for them Monday. You know something, baby? There's one thing about the dirty white boy. They are tough. Ain't no doubt in my mind. But, baby, when you see Rufus Jones and Mark Ray and the same Ray, honey, we tough too, baby. And I guarantee you, Monday night at the Coliseum, Rufus Jones be walking tall, baby, and be done his thing. Woo, my Rufus, God. Uh, they call you freight train. I want, I want you to take a look at this with us. Here you come. You're getting up that head of steam, and brother, you lay it to him. Mercy, baby, mercy. I tell you something. When our freight train come, the head but follow up, baby. It's all over. And Monday night, white boys, you're going to sit. 
We call Rufus Jones and Mark Ray, baby, gonna be getting down, honey. We call him with a fire university, honey, and all foul right here. You guys get along in great shape. You're looking good as a team. Somebody night, we're gonna dance, we're gonna wrestle, we're gonna do it all right there. Okay, good luck to both of you in there. We'll be looking for Thank you, you. the dirty one. Whoa, whoa, there's the freight train, Rufus R. He's teamed up with his nephew, uh, Mark Reagan, and I'll guarantee you they're going to mean some steam coming down on anybody that they get in that ring with. 54 tights out with Jay, Jay on the back of them, man, and you can wear them because I know I can whip. There's no doubt in my mind, baby. I'm telling you, I figured out who it's going to be. You're going to be you, back in the six-man tag? That's going to be, baby. I, here's what I'm saying. It's gonna, uh, Jerry Jarrett is the man that it's going to be in the ring. That's who it's going to be right now. He said he had a surprise for us. Didn't he say he had a surprise? Yeah, he said he was going to have a surprise for you. I guarantee you that's but who it's going to be. What I want to know is you tell me people are going to be right back in the ring. Well, I wouldn't exactly say that. You happen to be out here, that's for a fact. You ain't so smart, baby. Art has done a little riddle solving in here, Jerry. Well, let me just say, Hart, you know, uh, first of all, as you can see, Lance, I have a contract here. Hart, in other words, you're saying that you figured out who our partner is going to be. Now, you... You know, it hadn't been that long since Jerry Jarrett was in the ring, and I had many matches with him, and uh, he was a very tough, very formidable opponent. And, uh, you know, if you're so smart and you figured it all out, what I have here is just, uh, this is what you call a bonded contract. Now, I know that you are saying that you will be here, Hart, or you'll be there Monday night, but what I'd like you to do, you're so smart with that brilliant brain of yours that you figured out who our partner's going to be. Why don't you, you sign this bonded contract, and then all that means is that... Uh, uh, you know, that, that you will be there. And then I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tell you. What? <laughs> Somebody said, watch out. Yeah, boy, okay. Watch out. Really? Okay, listen. Tell you what I'll do. You sign this contract, Hart, and then I'll just, I'll just go ahead and tell you who it is. And I'll tell you this much. It's, you know, we didn't bring in some big exotic partner or anything like that. It's Eads right here in the studio. And uh, all we need your name is your name on this bonded contract that states if you don't go ahead and wrestle in the match, then you're going to forfeit this is a the, sum of up to $10,000, see? This, in effect, is simply a no-show guarantee that you're guaranteeing that you're going to be there, Hart, uh, in the six-man tag. That, that, huh? and he, okay. he and Bundy and Rude, they want to, you know, they want to be able to prepare for the match, then sign the contract stating that Hart will be in the match, and we'll go ahead and tell him who the partner is, and that's, you know, simple. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me see. Let me tell you something. First of all, Lauder, don't get any ideas about trying to jump me out here because Bundy and Rude are watching that monitor. I want you to know that right now. I am not scared of anything or anybody. I've had a serious injury, but baby, for this match right here, I know who it is. It's not Jackie Fargo. You know, I, I thought it over. I went out in the parking lot, and I didn't see that old rental relic he drives down here. I know it's not him. I know it can't be Dutch Mantel. Now, you ask me, it can't be Dutch Mantel because him and Tommy Rich are in a big match Monday, right? Title wrong. match, that's okay. correct. And it's got to be somebody that's in the studio today, right or wrong? Well, there they are here. The mystery partner is here today. All right, that's what he said. Well, let me tell you something. Surprise, surprise. You got to get up awful early before you put one over on me, King, you and Savage. Let me tell you something. I'll sign this because I promise you this. We had to come out and apologize on TV while ago, and it made me sick to have to do that to him. He's going to crawl in the ring. Hey, as a promoter, I respect him, but as a wrestler, we can do anything we want to do. Give me this. Where? Right there here? It is, right anything here. Anything we want to do to you, Jerry Jarrett, baby. Right anything you want to do, baby. I promise you this right now. I promise you, you understand, this. that's a no-show no guarantee. A no-show guarantee, but I promise you this, Lawler. You and Savage have made the biggest fool out of yourself you've ever seen in your life. Jerry Jarrett, baby, make my day. That's all I've got to say. Make my day. You got it, Jerry. A guarantee that Hart is going to be there when, when you and Savage and your mystery partner jump in there. He is guaranteed that he will be there. King Kong Bundy. Look how well his Rude. neck is. Oh, all of a sudden, yeah. He ran off and left his neck brace back up. His neck's in such good, good shape. Yeah. Well, I just hope it's just as that good a shape Monday night because his name is on the contract. Yep. He will be in the match, and uh, we'll let you all know who my partner is going to be in just a little bit, okay? Oh, okay. Now, you said you would tell it if he would sign it. Tell you what we'll do. Let's take time out. Newest member of the first family. We're going to take a look see right here today, baby. Dallas Cowboy. He's the one that's going to do uh, the king in. Uh.
Carl Jeff from Dallas and said, hey, bring on the biggest, the toughest, and the roughest in there. You know, there's probably some people just tuning in. I just wanted to explain why I'm dressed in this outfit once again. You know, uh, as Hart said, he's got this former Dallas or ex-Dallas Cowboy player. And I got a lot of friends on the Cleveland Browns. And uh, like Curtis Weathers gave me this jacket. Lyle Alzado a couple years back gave me this uh, jersey and everything. And I just thought it was a good opportunity to wear this out here today and uh, just uh, put a little egg on Hart's face here for once in a while. All right. I don't know anything about Dr. Death that's up there, but this may be Cleveland's very best opportunity to beat Dallas. I hate to say that, Jerry. <laughs> okay. He wears that in his car and he wears it. Baller. We've got more action. We've got the Dirty White Boys, the new generation coming up in just a moment. Hopefully you're enjoying the show, Lester. Like I said, it's very promo heavy, but uh, we're uh, getting to get to see some actual hear some action at least. Well, you took care of the Dallas Jerry Lawler and Dr. Jerry Jarrett. I'm so sick of seeing them on TV every week anyway, you know, so we're just putting an end to that. Listen, Hart has been out here driving us crazy about who mine and Randy Savage partner is going to be. Did all of it's these time people. for the announcement. Uh oh. <laughs> Come on, I told you now. You know, he said they used to have a problem with his eye, right? I know, that's what he said. Okay, Jerry come Jarrett on. coming out of the coat. He's ready. Can you play coming some out music of... for me? You want yeah. some music, too? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, how about a little music for our partner Monday night? Okay, let's hear it right now. Oh. What do you think? Good Lord, ladies and gentlemen, Jimmy Valiant is in the studios and the crowd are going absolutely banana. Holy moly. We've seen Jimmy come in and out of the territory, but we've only seen uh, videos. We've not actually seen the man live. And he is here. Handsome Jimmy Valiant. Jimmy feels good today, baby. I said, handsome Jimmy, Oh, Messi is back. Close stone sober, matter of fact. I want to tell you something, baby. Kingfish Lala, I love you to death, and you know that, brother. And savage, savage is street people. I like that, you see. And I want to say, snake, snake hot, and this big head Bundy. You know, I call him big head. Big head, he, he reminds me of what I'm... What a hit, baby, or something. And I want to say one more thing. This Rick and Rude. Rick and Rude. Ah, handsome Jimmy. Woo, that's, that's me. Handsome Jimmy has been talking to a few girls around town. A few ladies of the street, you understand? And I came to the conclusion. Hey, that's a big word, huh? Conclusion. I came to the conclusion that what I'm going to call you, Ricky Rudd, is... Where's the beef, Red? Yeah. You know something, get out of here, look at that. Oh, look at my head. I want to tell you something, Kingfish. Right now, I'm no mystery to men folk, Tennessee. That's right, yeah. I'm no mystery You're man, baby. You better believe it. I love them chitlins, and I love them grits, and I love that gravy. Yeah, All brother, right. cornbread. Hot cornbread and butter. Woo, what's that? Black eyed peas and green yes, stuff. Sir. Yeah, that's what I like, baby. Hey, Kingfish, Savage, and the Boogeyman, Hansel, Jimmy. We coming Monday. It's not gonna be no mystery. And we gonna get down on the fuss, the fuss family. Mm -hmm. that right? I love you. can't see all three. You guys on one side of the ring. Well, you gotta see it Monday night, and so is that one two Jerry Lawler is going to be in there with as wild as we ever saw, Randy Savage. And to make matters worse, it's going to be handsome Jimmy Valiant. And Jimmy Hart has already put his name on a no-show contract so that he is bonded. He is going to be there. Looking forward to that action Monday night with handsome Jimmy. That's my boy right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, David, what do you say we take a look at? <laughs> 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 Our out of town, actually. <laughs> 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 
I don't know whether we can. It'll handsome J Jimmy's still over there saying, Howdy, howdy. Oh, boy, is he wild. We got one on Eddie. Hot stuff. Gilbert, let's take a look at it. So we've got a uh, nice music video for Eddie Gilbert coming up. Eddie Gilbert wearing uh, red leather trousers and a red t-shirt waiting for a couple of ladies in a... Uh, in a sports car. Can't quite tell what the sports car is, but Eddie Gilbert is there wondering where they've been. I think he's even got red boots on as well. One of the young ladies gets out and Eddie... Uh, oh no, she gets back in. Eddie's now walking around town with these uh, young ladies on his arm. Going to some sort of building or clothes shop. Eddie Gilbert wearing a lovely uh, earring, some nice glasses. Looking through the threads, if you will. How he can see anything with his glasses on, but he's probably cooked out of his mind. <laughs> They're going to the changing room, coming out uh, in a black shiny top and some black trousers. Looking, uh, hmm. Looking like something. Even the young ladies that wearing sunglasses indoors. What the fuck's that about? What's up with these people? couple of hot stuff teams right here right now we're talking about the dirty white boys new generation Davey I have to have the introductions on this final match bout. to the expiration of time introducing at a total weight of 455 pounds West Coast champions Lynn Dell and Tony Anthony the dirty white boys going against them total of 442 pounds from Charleston West Virginia and Lexington Kentucky Mark Batten and Johnny Wilhite the new generation match to the expiration of time Jerry Calhoun is the referee I don't know if we're going to get this match, but we'll uh, we'll start it off anyway. Dirty White Boys versus the New Generation. Johnny Wilhoit still wearing that big old bandage on his knee. Red trunks, white boots. Len Denton starting for his team. Uh, white tights, black boots. Colin over top. Denton pushes Wilhoit in the corner. Oh, big club on forearm in the corner. And again, Wilhoit coming out with some right hands though. Both friends, good lord, slugfest. Wilhoit now with the upper hand. So like I said before, we've got green ropes, blue canvas, Joey Calhoun wearing a uh, white top, black trousers. Full-arm dragon twist now by Denton, reversed by Wilhite. Tag in to Tony Anthony, who's wearing matching uh, white tight black boots. Mark Batten tags in for his team, red trunks, white boots. Both in circle, Colin the red tie-up. Full-arm dragon twist by Batten. Working over the left arm of Tony Anthony. Anthony pushes him in the ropes. Irish up by Anthony. Ducks down. Oh no. Back in front face lock. Anthony picks him up and smashes him in the corner. Tag it to Len Denton. Oh, double axe to the back by Denton. Gets Mark Patton. Rams him head first in the top turn buckle. Oh, well, we're at the top of the head. Boy Denton turns Anthony, turns a uh, batten around and then slams him down for Sarta. Drops an elbow, does Denton. And, oh no, batten got up that time. Over at the gut, over at the gut. Batten working over uh, the midsection of Len Denton, tags in Johnny Wilhoit. Side headlock. So headed up by Will Hoyt. Denton trying to get out of this. Pull on the hair now, Denton. Oh, sorry, pull on the hair of uh, Will Hoyt. Tag in a Mark Batten who continues to work over the headlock. 
the dirty white boys having some trouble right at the moment. Mark Patton cinching that in. Anthony is out. The referee Jerry Calhoun checking him out. Cinching it in again. No choke on it. It's Johnny Wilhoit tagged in again. Side headlock again. Johnny is from Lexington, Kentucky. And Denton Irish whipped Wilhoit. Oh, knee to the gut. Denton rams Wilhoit. Oh, into the foot of Anthony on the apron. Tagging Tony Anthony. He comes in. Stomp. Will Hoyt chest versus at the top turn buckle there by Anthony. Picks him up. Irish whips him. Big close on by Tony Anthony. Ooh, neat at the top of the head. Ooh, big head by Anthony. Tag into Len Denton. Oh. Len Denton in now, Irish ups Johnny Wilhoit. Oh, duck down, duck his head down. Cardinal was taken by a ring veteran. Johnny Wilhoit gets a tag at the Mark Batten, who comes in over the top rope, working over on Anthony, working over on Denton. Forearm smashes to both the dirty white boys. Oh, drop kick by Batten. Drop kick by Batten. Drop kick by Batten. Johnny Wilhoit comes in. All four men in the ring now. Nope. Wilhoit out, Batten. Oh, struck to the throat there by Len, by Tony Amphrey Lynn. Denton goes for the cover. One, two, three. Don't you white boys get the pin? Don't you white boys get the pin? First fall of action. I think that's going to be the last fall as well by the looks of it. In a rather neat fashion as uh, we take a look and see how they did use the double team to get the first ball. Over the top, he leapfrog, and look at over here on the left of the screen, Dirty White Boy straight at it. Zing! While the referee is keeping Willoyd out, he nails Batten, and there's a cover. One, two, three. Davey, our time. 2.44. Let's take time out. We'll check and see how much time we have for another bout. Got 56 seconds left in the studio. No time for another fall in there. New generation would love to have another crack at the Dirty White Boys. But we had a dynamite show today. Hope you were interested in that little behind-the-scenes thing that happened on the interview uh, particular situation. We also had some great matches today, Dave. Yeah, we did. Tommy Rich, Dutch Mantel defeated Keith Robertson and Eddie Gilbert in their match. King Kong Bundy and Rick Rude over Ken Reaper and uh, Craig Carson. Then it was Rufus R. Jones, Mark Reagan defeating the Destroyers rather handily. The King, Jerry Lawler, uh, Cleveland defeated Dallas there as he defeated uh, yeah. Dr. Death. Right. Then it was uh, the Dirty White Boys over the new generation. Two minutes, 44 seconds, the time on that fall, and just uh, too much of the Dirty White Boys and manager Jimmy Hart. Yeah. I th so that, ladies and gentlemen, is it. I think from what I saw, the Dr. Death wasn't anyone. It wasn't David Schultz. It wasn't Steve Williams. I think it was just them trying to be funny, I think. But, uh, yeah, so ladies and gentlemen, that is it. So we've just watched the 29th of September 1984 edition of Memphis. It wasn't um, our usual matches and stuff like that, but hopefully we learnt, we got some intros, some interviews and everything, and we sort of moved a few things forward. It was nice to see Jimmy Valiant in the studio. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your continued support. As always, don't forget you can join us each and every week here on the Place to Be Wrestling Network, as well as our Bakery Productions Network. Don't forget to give the fine folk over on North South a listen and Backbone Wrestling Network, as well as our vantage point, Greenwich from Island Town, Book in the Territory, Acid Wash Memories, Stick to Wrestling Drum Academy, The Outdated Wrestling Hour, Bob Smith, and anything from the WrestleCopia Network. Thank you very much for your continued support each and every week. It means a lot. Thank you very much to the fine folk of Memphis, Tennessee. Thank you very much to Lance Russell, Dave Brown, and Jerry Jarrett. And until next time... <laughs> When it's spring again, I'll bring again Tulips from Amsterdam With a heart that's true, I'll give to you Tulips from Amsterdam I can't wait until the day you fill These eager arms of mine Like the windmill keeps on turning That's how my heart keeps on yearning for the day I know we can 
Share these tulips from Amsterdam Share these tulips from Amsterdam. Share these tulips. 